Hogstein. Well, that was an embarrassing display last night. I'm saying that because it's right now for us, but people will listen tomorrow. So, last night. Uh, it's Alex with you, the hog side. It's just me and Steve today. Don't know where Jamal is. Rob is working. We do know that. So, you know, he's got an excused absence. <laughs> um, Steve, we kind of talked about a lot of things that could have happened in this game, and the one thing I don't think we considered was Dwayne Haskins having four turnovers in one game. Yeah, and, that was a bit surprising to me. He's been pretty decent about the interceptions in the past. And fumbles, um, even. Like, he hasn't yeah. done a lot of it, you know. No, I'm, look, it's going to be the, you know, tar and feather Dwayne Haskins on Constitution Avenue this yeah. week parade, you know, for sure. But just remember this, people. Yeah, he was bad. Definitely. But the offensive line was atrocious. Sure. Nobody not named Terry McLaurin can get separation uh, in the wide receiver group can get separation at all. Um, the running game was okay at times it had its moments, but it's not a consistent effort. There is nothing on this offense that helps him at all. No. And so I do think it's fair to say that as bad as Haskins was today in some regards, he's definitely pressing and he's not good enough to be pressing and actually get it done. No, so that kind of exacerbates the problem a little bit. So yes, he sucked. But if you guys are just forgiving everybody else, including Ron Rivera, by the way, I'll get to him. Um, it oh, was yeah. really a team effort at Suckatude today. It, it was, and I think we're gonna want to talk about this offense for the bulk of the show. Um, so, but I want so I want to hit the defense overall first. Uh, okay. You know, just to get them out of the way, and then we can focus on the offense for like twenty minutes, and we'll talk about the defense for ten, that kind of thing. Let me do stats real fast. Yeah, why don't you then? give us some numbers? All right. Okay, so uh, stats Dwayne Haskins is 21 for 37, 224 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions, was sacked three times, had a rating of 58.8, and a completion percentage of 57%, which is frankly on par for him. Uh, Antonio Gibson, 9 for 49, averaged 5.4 yards per carry, long of 13. AGG had that one carry, 1 for 22. J.D. McKissick, 5 for 15. Isaiah Wright, 1 for 6. To Peyton Barber, 3 for 6. Uh, and Dwayne Haskins had two scrambles for two yards. Receiving-wise, Terry McLaurin once again proves himself. Uh, four receptions, 83 yards on eight targets. Dontrell Inman, two touchdowns, three for 38. J.D. McKissick, three for 37. Logan Thomas, four for 31 on seven targets. Isaiah Wright, four for 24. Antonio Gibson, three for 11. And AGG had two targets but no care, uh, receptions. On the Cleveland Browns offense side, Baker Mayfield was 16 for 23, 156 yards, um, two touchdowns, and a quarterback rating of 117. Yikes. And uh, he had a completion percentage of 70%. Nick well, Chubb. do it. Yeah, Nick yeah. Chubb went 19 for 108, 5.7 yards for carry long of 25. Kareem Hunt was 16 for 46. Um, receiving wise, Odell Beckham was 4 for 59. Jarvis Landry was three, four for 36. Austin Hooper was three for 25. Kareem Hunt was two for 18. Um, the fumbles was Steven Sims lost one. Dwayne Haskins lost one. And then the three interceptions. Um, Defense-wise, John Allen and John Bostic both had nine tackles. Uh, the sacks were Allen with one and Montez Sweat with one. I thought Sweat had two because he had the strip and the... Oh, he's credited as having one. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? They called one grounding, so that doesn't get counted. Yeah, that was not a sack, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And on on the Brown side, I'll just go over the sacks. That Miles Garrett had two, including that strip sack, and then Sheldon Richardson had one. Oh. So that is stats. Um, overall stats for yeah, the yeah. day is that. Um, I would like to point out here, as long as we're talking stats, we're going defense, right? Yeah, so, let's talk defense first. Okay, so at, at halftime... The Browns' running game was 16 for 59, and that is an average of – I didn't write this down, and my calculator is goofing up. That is an average of um, – dang it. It's in the threes, I can tell you that. Yeah, it's 3.7. Sorry, my calculator is yes. not – it's 3.7 yards per, per carry. By the end of the, you know, end of the game, 
you know, they were up to 4.3. Um, the defense really wore down quite right. a bit in this game. It was you can't you just can't keep a quality running team down forever. Uh, look, I, here's defensively. Um, it's fair to say I think we've proven by this point that the Washington has a decent pass rush. Sure. You know, they do get their sacks, but they don't really do anything else very good, okay? I mean, they're, you know, they're a decent to slightly below average team in the run, and their secondary is still hot garbage in most areas. So I, I just, if you if you were expecting this defense to take a big step forward, I never thought that was going to happen because of their weaknesses are key weaknesses. But, you know, and then on top of that, they lost Chase Young. They right. lost Ryan Anderson. They lost Matt Ioannidis. You know, Landon Collins went out briefly. There were a bunch of injuries. But the bottom line is I just don't think this defense as a whole is nearly as good as everybody hoped with the exception of the pass rush. And they didn't really – the pass rush didn't really get it done this week. No, it didn't. Uh, I mean, you did have a couple good pressures by Sweat. Kerrigan didn't do anything. Right. Um Young was doing okay until he got hurt, and uh, you're hoping that's minor. I mean, I don't think we've gotten anything other than we know it was a groin injury, they said, on the air. Yeah. Um, hopefully get, they're just kind of keeping that as a precaution at this point. Yeah, if we get something before the end of the show, we'll try to right. pass it on. To right. Um, but, yeah, the defense still looked – the line looked okay with Young out and Ioannidis out, but there were definitely – some serious issues, uh, especially when Anderson was in there on some run plays, and they just got gashed on his side a couple they times, especially did. that first big touchdown run. Yeah. The cutback, you know, like he was way out of position at that point. And, and, and you know, frankly, the run game was supposed to be his thing. You right. know, aren't you supposed to be the dude that can seal the edge? Right. Because you're not a pass rusher, Ryan Anderson, no. particularly. You're supposed to be able to seal the edge, and you don't. You know? And. and <laughs> He got, I mean, they were using him wrong, uh, frankly, because they kept on putting him in on third downs where it was, it should have been a pass rush situation. Like yeah, I didn't was, really understand that. Yeah. Why Why is he in there and not Sweater Kerrigan? Like, They're lucky. You know, what I, what we said about the Browns ahead of time is this is kind of a blah team. They're not mm-hmm. that good, okay? Their defense is very average. Um, you know, they're not, it's not exotic. They're not doing anything special. Their offense, Baker Mayfield, isn't that good. They, you know, he, he weirdly doesn't have chemistry with two of the best receivers in football. Um, uh, you know, but I mean, they're average when our team is below average. And right. so hence the victory. Yeah. That's the same. If you want to simplify it, that's what it is. An average at best team beat a far a way below average team. Right. That's right. what happened today. Yeah, it was. Uh, and now we should say, you know, Washington came back into this thing at one point. You know, we were leading again in the second half after being down 10 points. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, close counts and horses and hands. Yeah, games. I know. And I, I'm saying it's not like they just quit right away. No. <laughs> this is what we've come to after years and years doing this show. Right. They didn't quit right away. Well, you know, that's that's 20, uh, 2019 Bill Callahan quit right away offense, you know. like <laughs> Exactly. Never get started. Yeah. You know. Oh, basically. we ran the ball really well for the first two drives. All right, let's just call it a day. You know, <laughs> that was Bill yeah, Callahan. Yeah, I mean, Nick Chubb is sort of a classic um, NFL runner from years gone by, wherein if you give him – enough time and enough carries he's eventually going to get rolling like he started out first quarter four carries six yards halftime 12 for 53 which is you know 4.1 4.2 yards per carry third quarter 14 for 58 less than four all of a sudden he's got 108 yards it's it's you know when the defense gets worn down he just will keep after you and after you and after you and eventually he's going to get his right you know that's kind of nick chubb and again washington just isn't good enough to hold down any well, decent running game for all and four. Also goals. worth noting, twenty-one points came off of Haskins' turnovers. That all those yeah. drives started basically in field goal range. Yeah. Know? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, Washington can't make mistakes like that. No. No. The no. Browns. It's really the Browns that in the past two games have made a bunch of mistakes like that. Right. This is, Washington hasn't. You know, right. they just you know were Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde for different halves in the past two games. Yeah. This week they killed themselves with with mistakes and it was all there were also some penalties you mm-hmm. know and you're involved in that um but yeah defensively i mean i don't know what you can say about defense um i mean kendall fuller didn't really show up too much 
The whole uh, the secondary was fairly quiet, but the Browns were run first, so that's not surprising. Yeah, and they only made twenty three pass attempts. Right. You know, and that's the that's what the Browns are is run first. You know, Baker Mayfield just does just enough to not hurt them. It, you it's kind of what you had hoped Washington would kind of develop into under Rivera pretty quickly, but they're, they're not there yet. They don't have the backs right. for it. No, they don't. Yeah, they don't. And they don't have the receivers either. No, you know? no. But frankly, if you're going to be run first, you really shouldn't be spending what the Browns are spending at, in terms of resources at wide receiver. You know what a run first offense could have used is Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Yeah. Could have, but I don't know. I don't know what, I mean, I understand the we want to see what young guys have argument, but still, it's frustrating at the same time. I, I, yeah, there's a lot of things I don't yeah. understand about yeah. what the choice this team has made. Like, I do blame Ron Rivera for quitting again. I don't like the way, just generally speaking, first of all, I don't like the way he manages the clock at the end of halves. Um, he wastes a lot of time, and this is the second game in a row he's surrendered. Yeah, you just surrendered. You know, you just quit. And and yeah, okay. If you want to be ultra cautious and say we had a lot of injuries and all of that, and a quarterback that's lost his confidence, okay, fine. But it's also telling your team that you don't believe in them and you're going to quit because you don't think they can win. Once again, you were within two scores. What did you do? Did you try to stop the clock? No, no of course you not. had four minutes where you could have tried to preserve time. Could have called yeah. three timeouts, and yeah, they would have had you know three minutes left if they really wanted to do it right. And they he just quit. I, I really, I, I, if I was a player, to me it would send the signal that I don't believe in you. Right. That's well, what it tells me. There's that, and then even at the end of the half. Yeah, same uh, thing. Now, granted, I think they tried going for it when they had about three minutes, and they turned the ball, ball over and got scored on again. But then you had 55 seconds left, and you did what? A, a, a run and then a dump off pass, uh, and that was it? Yeah, yeah you didn't try. Yeah. I'd rather just kneel down. Right. And just openly show you surrender. Just surrender. Right. Throw on the white flag or something, you know, like boxing. Throw a towel in. Yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of with – well, I am I disagree with what Ron did because I, I think if there's 15 seconds left on the clock, throw a Hail Mary. That's my mentality. You know, like – Is there a reason not to? Yeah, I mean, I, do it. it. I, I, maybe I've watched too much arena football where 15 seconds is like three scores. Well, but... do you think Bill Belichick would have done what he did? Uh, no, because Bill Belichick's never down by ten points. <laughs> if he was, he wouldn't surrender. Oh no, no, he absolutely wouldn't. Yeah, he'd go for a field goal. Like that's you know, kind of his. I gotta. I mean, I gotta be honest. I mean, I gotta criticize Ron Rivera for the way he's handled it. I, Some I, of you out there disagree, and that's fine. You know, oh, so what? I, you disagree if you want, but he's been really. I really strongly disagree with his philosophy. Yeah, so far, and. Maybe he is tanking, uh, and he doesn't want to say it, but maybe this is a we're going to tank and try and get a high draft pick that can change this team on offense. And I hope not. <laughs> I, I'd hope not, but I'd also understand it because, I, I mean, we said it a week ago, this team's 11 good players away on offense. You know, like, <laughs> th- okay, yeah, no, no wait, we said line, 10 because Terry McLaurin's yeah. good. It, that was it, your line. It was a good line, I got to say. Yes. <laughs> Just yeah. 10 players away. Yeah, yeah. That's all we are. Right. You know, okay, so to finish up defense here, what are some bright spots? Um, Sweat really had a don't... good game. That's a bright yeah, spot. Yeah, Sweat had a good game. Um, I think he has talent. You know, that may be the only bright spot I can see out of this group I, right now. I mean, here's the thing. The linebackers didn't play terribly. Uh, and We got gashed in the run game in the second half, but yeah. I think that's more of a product of, you know, bad field position. And... But in terms of impact players, yeah, I mean, no, no, we had no I, impact I, players. And listen, I mean, I keep saying it. You know, the defensive line needs to be much better than it is, considering there are now four number one draft picks starting on this defensive line. Five. Well, well, the starters are four of them, okay, and then you yeah, throw sorry. in Ryan Kerrigan as your fifth. Sorry. So, and, and then your best defensive tackle might be the fourth round pick Matt Hyde is. Yeah, yeah exactly and so these guys are underperforming they've underperformed right. all of them have underperformed since they've been here I mean Deron Payne had a decent game today with a couple of plays but by and large John Allen and Deron Payne are not nearly the impact players that we hoped um I don't think um you know Chase Young had his you know had his day and he's going to get a lot better hopefully right um he had an impact in the Philly game but since then you know yeah, yeah. No, I, I well, I mean, let's be fair to him that he was out for most of this game. 
Yeah, you know, uh, absolutely. Left. Definitely. He, him and uh, Ionitis both got hurt. For, what? Almost first understand quarter? me. I mean, he, he's a rookie in his third game. I right. mean, I'm not expecting him to be, no, uh, no, you no. know, off the charts. But my point is, none of these guys consistently make an impact. And at various times, with the exception of Young, because he's so new, they've all underperformed drastically we've and seen, underperformed their draft status. We, we saw a lot of good flashes from Young, even in Arizona, the Arizona game. Like, he popped yeah. out, like, you know, that there was that screenplay where he kind of changed direction and yeah. ran it down and things like that. And, and this game was the first one from Sweat that he's kind of flashed. Now, if the two of them together can start doing that on a regular basis, then you might have something. On the other hand, this was a Cleveland Browns, mediocre Cleveland Browns team with a so-so defensive right. line and a quarterback who's mediocre. So, True. you know, I would hope they would flash against a team like that. You'd hope so. Yeah. Um. All right, well, let's switch sides. Uh, let's right. talk about offense. this offense because that's Lovely, all you can man. say. Look, um, so Dwayne Haskins, let's just get him out of the way first because, again, I just know it's going to be a bash Dwayne Haskins week. I think we're going to get back to Dwayne Haskins a couple times, yes. Yeah, and I'm not here to defend him necessarily. You know, uh, he's been bad, and he hasn't really gotten better. But um, I think what – the way the Washington, the Redskins franchise handled him last year through this year is a textbook on how to ruin a quarterback. Sure. Okay. I mean, they had a coach who didn't want him. That coach got fired and replaced by a dude running a 1968 offense with no talent. Mm -hmm. And now he's got a different coach who's undeniably a better coach. But, you know, he still has no talent around well, him. And he still switched systems. You know, again, and so we're at, we're at game. Um, this was game twelve for him, sure. and it was start ten. So we're getting to the point where we need to see something from the guy. Nobody expects him to be a Hall of Famer immediately, but there's some other rookies or his class that are starting to do stuff and starting to look better, and he's just not. Right, and, and I think you know now. Does he lack a good line? Yes. He lacks an even. He lacks. He lacks Even an average, average line. line. Yes. Yeah, they, they suck. <laughs> yeah, they, they 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 play good enough to get him. I don't know, two seconds on average, something like that. Not you know, a lot. there are guys who actually time it with a stopwatch, but yeah, uh, let's just say that's where he's at. And other guys get three to four sometimes. You know, like he doesn't look how much time Mayfield got at times. Today. I don't think Haskins has ever had four seconds in the pocket in his, <laughs> you know, Entire in this year. season. Yeah. No. Um. So I don't, but at the same time, like they they haven't found what his comfort zone is, and even in simple plays that you should hit ninety percent of the time, dump offs, screens, it, it it's the overthrow thing, man. Like he overthrows every target every time. I think part of that is he's throwing off his back foot. Right. That's part of it. Part of it is he's making bad reads and force and forcing the ball into situation into spots where he shouldn't do that. And the reason for that is none of these receivers, but McLaurin ever get any separation from anybody. Right. And so I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think a better coach would help, would have, would have helped Haskins with his, with his technique a lot more better talent around him with a running game would make him feel more comfortable and make him feel like he doesn't have to press like that. Um, so I think it's a combination of a lot of things with Haskins. And I know, I just think he's really not getting it, getting yeah. the big it, the ubiquitous it. I don't think he's really getting it very well and nearly as fast as we all hoped. And part of that was he hadn't played very much, you know, even in college he had played one year, I kind of ignored that, you know, when I watched this film two years ago, and that was a mistake by me. Um, there's a reason why Bill Parcells liked guys who were like three-year starters. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know? and I think that, the, you know, there are some truisms to those old Parcells five rules of what a, you know, winning yeah, quarterback is. Yeah, there are. Is. So you take a combination of of three different coaches, two different systems, um, horrible talent around him. He's getting pressured all the time. A guy who's inexperienced with technique problems. Um, it's not a recipe for success, and so that's what we're seeing here. This has been a, basically numbers-wise, this is kind of on the par with what we've seen from him: fifty-seven percent completion rating, rating yeah. of fifty-eight percent or fifty-eight rating, a yeah, few more interceptions. This is kind of what we've seen throughout his career, and at some point, the excuses need to stop. I mean, he's going to get blamed for this 
no matter if you should or not. Well, for this particular game, he absolutely should. He, yes, his mistakes lost this game. Hands like he's yeah, responsible for about twenty one points of the defense. Um, you know the, those drives killed them. Yep. Like this loss, I you could maybe argue the first loss last week was not on him. Like that was a team loss, but well, the interceptions one. were also all on him. This is not a case yeah, where absolutely. like you're being off saying. somebody's hand, and you know somebody made a great play where misreads, no, bad he's passes, staring down guys, and staring down the guys receivers. Th- yeah. They're his first target. It's usually some interior, you know, receiver. It's not. Like and he's, he's lucky there the wasn't one more too. By the way, he had one, another one that should have been yeah. caught. Should yeah. have been full. Uh, well, the the screen pass that should have been caught by yeah. the other team. Yeah, that was Where what he I was thinking. Overthrew a receive or a running back by about two feet. Yeah. Um. So that's Haskins. Yep. Um. On the positives, I thought Antonio Gibson looked a little bit more like a running a starting running back today. He's starting to improve a little bit. He yeah. Looked a little bit more comfortable, you know, hitting the interior gaps in the uh, offensive line, such as they were. He had some more consistent production. Now it's. Stands to be seen if he could do that getting 25 carries a game instead of nine. Probably couldn't. But I thought at least he looked a little bit more comfortable. Um, that So that's good. J.D. McKissick looks like a playmaker in spurts. He's another guy. I think you throw him in there all the time. He wouldn't be very good. But when you kind of can use him sort of sporadically, he can, has a chance to do some damage. So that's well, good. I say it was one really nice catch. At one yeah, he point. did. Yeah. yeah, he did. The 26-yard the twenty six starter. Yeah. Um, it was good to see Isaiah Wright get in the game and get some playing time. I mean, he didn't make an impact necessarily, but it was good to see that. Uh, Dontrell Inman made an impact, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know the status of his hand. He went in the locker room with a, hand, a wrist injury. It looked it, to me that like That looked like he dislocated his wrist or broke something. Yeah. You know, it didn't look good. The way he was carrying it where it was just kind of limp did not look yeah. good. Yeah, that's another thing. If we get some info on this before the show yeah, ends, yeah. You know, we'll pass that on. Um, you know, but it's, it's kind of what – it's kind of what we've seen from the 2020 Redskins this entire season. It's they, they, there are times when in spurts, certain players can make an impact, but overall it's a very consistent offense. Well, here's what I'm starting to get a vibe of and tell me if I'm kind of off here, Steve, I get the vibe that they're too in love with gadget players all of a sudden to, to a point where it's a detriment. Like, uh, Gibson and AGG and Wright, these and even Steve Sims, these aren't, you know, traditional NFL receivers or running backs. They're all kind of gadget athlete types. Who? Well, yeah, I agree with you. And you yeah. notice that they would they run a lot of uh, reverses. They run a lot of wide receiver jet sweeps by wide sure. receivers. Sure. What they don't have is a guy who's a Z receiver who is going to make an impact running the entire route tree. Right. That's right. what they lack, and I think that's sort of what you're getting at. They've got a bunch of these gadget guys. Steven Sims, right. I love him. You know, undrafted free agent, outplayed as you, you like know, guys what, named Steve. It's, it's yeah, of that. course. <laughs> but and, and he and Antonio Gibson are kind of that. You know, J.D. Right. McKiss is kind of that. So they do need another sort of traditional wide receiver or two, a Dontrell Inman type who is a impact receiver. That's right. what they, they need. They need like I think gadget guys are fun. Like don't get me wrong, they're they're fine to have guys like and we've seen San Francisco use a couple of these guys and have some success on a couple drives. But you can use that maybe for one or two drives a game. It can't be the backbone of your offense. Not in yeah. the NFL. Like in college, you know, colleges do that all the time where their entire offense is based off of run pass option, uh, triple option, like all these option type offenses. And it works at that level because you can out athlete guys. You're not going to do that in the NFL on a regular basis. And nor do they have players who could out athlete them anyway. <laughs> well, no, yeah, they're taking guys who can do it on the college level and they don't, they can't do it on the yeah. NFL level. They, yeah. they can get yards. Like all these guys on these reverses that we're talking about, they get seven yards. That's a great run, but you can't do 30 of those a game. No. Now let's talk about the offensive line here a little bit. Um, I sure. thought they were mostly atrocious yep. uh, the entire game. The left side between Ruyer and West Martin, how many, you know, how many bad plays did they have? Several. John Christian at times got blown up by Miles Garrett, you yes. know, on that strip sack that that was on Christian. <laughs> um, Morgan Moses, you know, seems to be the most solid one out of this group. 
Um, and he's avoiding the penalties for the most part, like he did in the past couple of years. So that's good. This um, is, yeah, I think he's he looks healthier than he has been so far, which is a change. Yeah. Last yeah. two years, he hasn't looked healthy. No, he hasn't. So he's been better. But, I, I mean, it's the it, when you throw a rookie behind a horrible offensive line, this is part of it. This is why I'm not really defending Haskins. Because he right. was bad, but right. there are reasons why he was as bad as he was, and it wasn't entirely all on him. You know, it's not. When you have this bad of offensive line and very little talent around you, it's not going to go well. You know, it's just mm-hmm. not. And that's what this is a team. Like I said in the beginning, it's a team. It's a team effort of suck. That's what it I'm is. Saying. It, it, it's and it's not just that. It's uh, team and coaching staff. Let's. Not let that they don't get off the hook in this. Situation. Yeah, no, they don't, and they don't, and they need to establish more of a traditional running game, like you said. They can't have a constant s- string of jet sweeps and reverses and all this stuff. They really need to have one guy, if it's Antonio Gibson or someone else. Maybe they need to give Bryce Love a shot. I think you know, I think you of... need to give Love a shot because here's the thing: even when Gibson's running it traditionally, and I'm going to use air quotes for traditional, and he was a little bit better at that. He, a, he's a, a little, places, he's getting better at it, but. It's mostly him running out of shotgun and him running either to the edge or, th- you know, to the B gap. Like he doesn't run it up the middle because uh, I don't well, think a little he's bit, not much. Yeah. No, not much. He doesn't at least. I mean, is there some reason why Peyton Barber can't be made inactive? Is he making of some big impact that we can't give Bryce I, a little I, shot? I mean, you know, he had what seventeen carries for seventeen yards at one point. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, I think they might as well try. That's all I'm saying. They need to find somebody who is, can consistently get yards you, on the ground. That's how you help a quarterback who's str- a young quarterback who's struggling. Yes. Look at Baker Mayfield, for God's sake. Baker Mayfield is no better than Dwayne Haskins, but he has better receivers, and he's got an outstanding running game, so mm-hmm. he looks a little better. He's no better. I promise you he's no better than that. You throw Mayfield into this offense, he would look atrocious too. I'm sure. And, well, and I, I would say that about most it, like except for the Aaron Rodgers, the Drew Brees of the world, like most quarterbacks they would make this. Yeah, they would make this offense look at least average. Right. Yes. Most quarterbacks only are as good as their you know weapons in their offensive line, and, and Haskins is looking like he's more in that category right now. And we just don't have the good supporting cast. Um, the the one thing you know we were talking about the running backs. You kind of need to. Find somebody to be that other running back who can just do a traditional power running, yeah, you know thing. But I think it holds true for the receivers. We were kind of talking about that earlier. We, you need to have multiple like modes for this offense to work. And right now, you've got a gadget mode, and that's it. And it's only doing so much. If they can find a traditional second receiver to kind of run a traditional passing offense from time to time, and then find a running back who can run. On the traditional running offense, I think you might have something, but you got to fix that O line first. Yeah, D- Dwayne Haskins has to have time in the pocket and not yeah. be constantly pressured all the time, which he is. I, like I tried at the beginning of this game, one of the things I thought I would try to keep track of because I do this and I'm a nerd like this and keep track of weird things during mm-hmm. games. I started keeping track of the results of passes that went 20 or more yards in the air, but there's so few of them <laughs> that right. it was kind of pointless. You know, like he was one for two at one point in time. One of them was intercepted. And we might have been one for three, I think, at the end of the game in terms of air yards, passes in the air over 20. Um, He's not doing that much. And, yes, we said in the pregame show that it needed to be a quick offense, and it does, uh, you know, because of the line problems. But we do need to get to the point where there's some threat downfield. Sure. You know, you can't just – be you can't do this for 16 weeks in a row. You have to have some threat to keep a defense honest, they, and they, they need really to don't. Start sending somebody just deep on every play to kind of balance. It needs that to be out. Steven Sims. Somebody. I, I don't care. Yeah. I, I don't think it should just be Steven Sims. Like I think you have enough guys who run a four 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 three that could do yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, and it's better if it's not just one guy. But he needs to take some shots, too. Yeah, they need to take some shots, but they also, it would help guys like McLaurin. We saw what he could do if he gets the ball and there's a little bit of space for him to make moves. He he had, uh, of his four catches, I think two of them, half the yardage came, or more, came after the catch. He's helping, that helps the quarterback tremendously. Exactly. But getting a guy who can go deep on the same side and pulls that safety, 
that that's just going to improve things for him. Yeah, you know, but he has to take the shots for it to work. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, like yeah. leaving like Kobe Bryant in his prime with the Lakers. They would always double or triple team, and it would leave some scrub open in the corner. But everybody knew the scrub wasn't going to get the ball, and so they ignored him because right. Kobe was going to take every shot. For right. better or for worse, mostly for better. And, and that's – so you have to keep defenses honest by taking – so he hasn't taken a deep shot really all year. Right. But maybe that's not true. Oh, he's taken one or two, and that's it. Not he, many. He hasn't had time to, which is – like, no. to set those up properly, you know, maybe you can do a play-action pass, and those usually set it up. But I, hey, look, I, don't, I wouldn't I, trust this line to hold up for a play-action. A certain person who – Speaks and writes for the Hogsty advocated for an offensive lineman in round one for the draft for this mm-hmm. very reason. Uh, you know, I, I love Chase and all of that, um, but what we sort of did is made a strength a more of a strength. And what they really needed was to improve some weaknesses, and that's what they did. That's that was for those of you who think I hate Chase Young because there are people out there I don't. He looks like he's going to be good or great, but they didn't really help the team. Well, they improved his strength. That and was the my killers, they didn't even help it in free agency. You know, no, like, they just ignored it. Th- there's a level of, uh, and, and this is where uh, we're getting close to the end. But one of the things that I think it's fair to kind of judge this team on for the year will be: Did Rivera do a good job as general manager or not? Because right now, it's I'll be honest, I don't see a general man. He's a great coach. I don't know if he needs to be dealing with roster issues right now. Cause... Well, I mean, who knew? We nobody knew he was going to have cancer. Oh no, no, no! I don't. But he, we didn't know about the cancer during free agency either, and I don't think he did either. Yeah. Um. I mean, I fault him for um, giving up on the wide receiver position after Amari Cooper right. said no. Kind of standing pat him. there. Yeah, as a tight I end. fault him for believing Logan Thomas was going to be a starting tight end. Uh, it you know, was a thin I, tight end group this year. Let's, it we was, can but, look, yeah. but you didn't make much of an effort, and I definitely fault them most of all for ignoring the offensive line. I mean, you knew Trent one way or another was going to be gone. Right. You knew that. And what did you do? Nothing. Right. You know, okay, well, that's – I mean, you drafted Sadiq Charles in round three, but it was unrealistic to expect – even if he hadn't been hurt, it was unrealistic to expect a third round draft. Wasn't he third round? Yeah, third, third round, round. And, and, and tackle. No, like it was unrealistic to expect a third round draft pick to stump in and start at tackle and be good. You, you can see it maybe at right tackle time to time or interior linemen do that, but not left tackles. Yeah, it's just not realistic. And so I do think he. I mean, you can't fix every every problem in a year, and no. we shouldn't expect him to, but I don't think he did enough to really help the team in a free agency. And we're seeing the results of that now. Yeah, we what, are. So what are we seeing? Offensive line problems. What are we seeing? Uh, wide receiver group that threatens literally nobody ever. Right. Terry McLaurin is the only one, and the rest of these guys are just a bunch of guys in the view of opposing defenses. They're just a bunch of guys. Um, if you know, Yeah, if they're not threats. You know, I mean, I'm glad to see AGG gone on the field a little bit and made an impact. He but had one nice run. That was about it. He's mm-hmm. a rookie from Liberty, and and, and I know, like our buddy Rick, uh, you know, is tired of hearing the Liberty thing. But the reason why it's important is it's a huge adjustment for a dude from Liberty, right? To come in, the, that's why it is important. So, it's it, yeah, it's a bit frustrating. But in terms of this game, it's sort of more of the same, plus much many more mistakes from Dwayne Haskins. That's what happened, right? I, I mean, really, it. We could take the Liberty thing one step further, Steve. Your your top wide receivers that you've picked, you got a guy from Liberty, you got a guy from Memphis, you got a guy from Temple, and Steve Sims you got last year from Kansas. Like, Which is one of the worst power five conference right. schools in the nation. Like, Let's be honest, Memphis and, Can- and Temple are probably better football teams than Kansas at this point, even though they're mid-majors. They, they could probably beat Kansas most years. So, like... Th- these are not guys from top schools. They they might they have talent, and we've seen some you know good things from them. But they're not top cream of the crop five star prospects. You're getting a lot of one star guys and hoping they bloom at this point. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's exactly what they are. So they don't. Yeah, they didn't yeah. got go out and get any sure things. No, <laughs> you know, no, and, and it's uh, I I think it's showing a little uh or a lot. Showing a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's showing a lot. All right, Steve, we're getting to the end, so 
I'm assuming you're going to give a game ball to the uh, Browns here. No, so. no, no, no. Why do you assume that? I don't do that in every your, loss. Your bit. I just like doing it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's kind of fun. Right. Um. But look, okay. So game balls. Um. First of all, nobody on a defense that gave up 34 points deserves a game ball. But if we have to give one, um, which we do because I Depends make the rules. This. Yeah, those are the rules. I will give Montez Sweat. A deflated game ball because he did make a bit of an impact this sure. week when you know he lost his compadre on the other side. So I reluctantly, and by default, give Montez Sweat a game ball. Um, offense is a lot harder, man. It is. I mean, good lord. Um, see, I don't think there's a defender, a Cleveland defender, that is worthy of the Redskins' offensive game ball. That's why I'm not giving him sure. one. There's not one player. It's really the Redskins or the Washington shot themselves in the foot for the most part. Um, by default, I guess Terry McLaurin, because he once again looks like a top receiver, you know, mm-hmm. and had he had a better quarterback, you know, he would have had over 100 yards and a good, you know, you know, very good game, but he doesn't. So Terry McLaurin, by default, gets a deflated game ball from me. Terry McLaurin is kind of becoming what Larry Fitzgerald was in Arizona for so many years. where The only player who was any good. <laughs> right, right. Although he had Anquan Bolden for a couple of years, man. That was a yeah, duo. They just couldn't find a quarterback. Um, <laughs> okay, so I, I think I'm going to go with you on defense. Let's go uh, Montez Sweat. Um, they, they they had a line there, by the way, where they said, that was a nice sweat sack, and I was like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> a sweaty sack, yeah. yeah. No matter who you are, when you hear sweat sack, that, that kind of – That's funny. Come yeah. on, people. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna right, you're going to rag me for it, but I'm going to give it to Isaiah Wright on offense just because, you know – Temple guy, and he he had a little bit of an impact. Uh, you, did? you know, did you watch the same game I did? Yeah, he had a little bit of an impact. <laughs> He's your guy. It's from Temple. I get it. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. This is look. This is not one that's going to go up on his mantle, though. No, okay? <laughs> no. I, no one should be proud of what they did today. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. That would be I'm my just... speech to the the players when uh, you know, as soon as hey, Rod Rivera doesn't need to make a speech because he said everything he needs to say by quitting on his team and not believing on him. At the end of the game, he his his in the game speech was, "I don't believe on in you, and so I quit." Right. That's what Ron Rivera said today. Again, yeah, we didn't talk about that run. enough, man. Like th- the message he is sending there is so bad. Like I, I understand maybe you're trying to build for the future or whatever, but this is not the way. This is not the message you send to the players you want to keep. It'd be one thing if they were down by thirty. Mm-hmm. But this is two weeks in a row where they were realistically within, not real, they were within two scores. Right. And you had several minutes A field goal, left. a touchdown, and a yeah. two-point. You're a, you know, yeah, you're a miracle throw away from being back in the game. And he quit and he, and he quit two two weeks in a row. So um, that is on Rivera. He yes. didn't do the right thing. And he is sending the wrong message to his team. He really He's is. really saying, I don't believe in you. It, it, it It's depressing and worrying. He just can't that... play scared for injuries. It, it, that's his reason, which I guess it was last week. We haven't seen his comment this week. Uh, you know, you can't worry about that. No. No, you, you can't. Know? You, you got to play. Play the game. You know, again, I just want him just throw in the towel next time. Just don't even bother. Just walk off the field. Tell, tell the more guys honest. to take a knee eight times in yeah, the fourth quarter or something. Yeah, be more honest than what you're doing. Right. Right. You know. It, it's... gets the go to the week from me is, is Ron Rivera for that. Yeah, and, and he can defend himself. I'll give him a shot, but like that's wor- and that that's worrying that he's not kind of taking that sense, and the the offensive coordinator is not kind of improving. Like yeah. I'm, I'm a little worried about the coaching staff already. So I'm, we're definitely worried about the offensive coaching staff because yeah. I don't, I don't think they're not putting Dwayne in a position to succeed. They're not. They're not putting anyone in a position to no. improve. Dwayne's I don't care about success, just improve. I don't see that. Dwayne's going to take the blame for today, but it's not just him No, at all. And he was pressing because of the situation and because his receivers are just god-awful, atrocious for the most part. And because they don't, have a, they don't have a plan B. They have a plan A, which should be your plan C. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Yes. No, I understand. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's... Yes, we've yeah. said enough. Yep, we have. All right, let's 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 call this one a wrap. Thank you all for listening to us vent. Um, I, I hope you all have a good week this week. Uh, who are we playing next weekend? Oh, yeah, the Ravens. Oh, we can't curse, <laughs> can we? 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can. Aren't we rated on SoundCloud somehow? I Still, mean, yes, but we're trying not to. We're trying not to curse. So, so let's just make sure. Let, let me check the handy dandy schedule real quick. Let me let me make sure. Let me see. Is it the Ravens? Oh, look, it's the Ravens. Lamar ah, Jackson, uh, the MVP, <laughs> <laughs> is coming to FedEx Field. It's coming to the Big Jack in Ral John, Maryland. Oi, oi, sure to go wrong. <laughs> oi, vey. All right, Steve. Uh, <laughs> Cheers, I'll talk, everybody. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>